Okay, for this video we're heading back to think about heat transfer and heat flow. Uh, so we will be calculating heat transfer from specific heat capacity and learning how to calculate thermal equilibrium. All substances have a heat capacity. It's their ability to absorb and store heat. When we talk about a specific heat capacity, we're going to use a little C as a variable, so that's it right here. And we make it, we, we pin it down, we say that it's the amount of heat that we're going to need to change the temperature of that substance by one degree Celsius per kilogram, or by one degree Fahrenheit per pound. So the higher your specific heat is, the more of a heat sink you are. You can, you can hold that heat without changing your temperature. So if your temperature goes up quickly, that means you have a low heat capacity. So if it's going up fast, not a great heat capacity. And sorry, not a great specific heat. I kind of use them back and forth, but uh, I should be saying specific heat. All right, so cooking oil is an example. It gets hot fast, low heat capacity, low specific heat. And if you're at a beach, the water will feel cooler than the sand because it didn't get hot as fast because of the higher heat capacity, higher specific heat. So specific heat is another way we can figure out heat transfer. Recall before we were able to do heat transfer from thermal conductivity using that K value and a very big messy formula. This time our formula is much nicer. We've got Q is equal to Cm delta T or Q is equal to Cw delta T. In the metric, we're talking a mass. In imperial, we're talking a weight. I'll probably just use Cm delta T interchangeably, just so you know. So let's review our variables. We're trying to calculate the heat or the heat flow. That's Q. If we're in metric, we've got lots of choices of how we can express heat. Joules, kilocalories, calories. If we are in imperial, we're really just going to stick with BTUs. C is the specific heat of a substance, and that's a table lookup, and we'll see where that is in a second. And it can be reported in these three units. So if you're calculating heat in joules from specific heat, make sure that your mass is in kilograms. Likewise, if you want it in kilocalories, your mass will also be in kilograms, which means there must be two different columns for joules and kilograms. And if you're thinking about calories, your mass is going to be in grams. So watch out for any conversions you may have to do. If you want to find the heat transfer in imperial, in BTUs, you're going to use pounds. We talked about M and W, mass and weight. And delta T is our change in temperature equals T2 minus T1. Before we get into calculations, let's make sure we know where to find specific heat on our formula sheet. So we're going to the biggest feature of your formula sheet now. It has a list, it has some other things that we're going to deal with next video, heat of fusion and heat of vaporization. But for now, we're just looking at the part in the red dotted box. And you'll see that there are two values. So it depends on what your heat output is going to be in. If you are doing joules, use the big numbers. That makes sense. Joules were small units. You always get big, crazy numbers with joules. What's interesting is if you are doing calories per gram, kilocalories and kilograms, or BTUs, so both metric and imperial, use the same value. So that's kind of nice. Another interesting thing is we see that we have three forms of water here, ice, steam, and water, solid, gas, liquid, and they don't have the same specific heat. So specific heat depends on the material, but it obviously also depends on the phase, solid, liquid, or gas, of that material. So we'll start with a simple example. I see BTUs, I see pounds. I want heat, I know it's steel, so how do I know I'm going to use Q equals Cm delta T instead of Q equals KAT change in T over L? Well, I don't see time, I see a mass or a weight, 
you know, it kind of points you to this formula to solve for heat. All right, so we're looking for Q. We'll get back to C in a second. We know that the mass or the weight is 10 pounds. And the change in temperature, it's going to go up 150. So we don't have to do any subtraction to get the temperature change. I'm just going to flip back to the previous slide because we need to find the specific heat of steel in Imperial. So looking onto the thing, I find steel right here. And I have two choices, 0.115 or 481. Make sure your units match up. I see at the top in the green, that's what I want, BTU and pound and Fahrenheit. So I'm going to pick this number. Okay, continuing on. Whoop. By highlighting it, writing it with a highlighter. Okay, I'm not going to put the units down because I've already forgotten what they are. So here we go. Straightforward multiplication times 10 pounds multiplied by a temperature change of 150 and I get 172.5 BTUs. So that means if I want to raise the temperature 150 degrees of 10 pounds of steel, I have to put in, I have to transfer in 172.5 BTU. So do you think it would be more or less heat that you would have to add to raise the temperature of water 150 degrees? Well, steel takes heat way more easily than water. So if you were dealing with water, you'd have to put way, way more heat in to make that much of a change in temperature. All right, let's look at the second one. I see joules, and I know that joules go with kilograms, so I'm going to have to do a conversion. So starting with C, don't have it yet, M is going to be 0 0.5 kilograms in order to get a Q in joules. I'll just write down question mark joules. And my change in temperature, and I'll do T1 is 75. T2 is 20. You're going from 75 down to 20. So the change in temperature is T2 minus T1, which is negative 55 degrees Celsius. And then remember, that just tells us that we are cooling. All right. Oh, I have to go get C. So we're talking about water in joules. I go back to my table. I look for water. I don't use one, even though I want to. I use 4,190 because that is the specific heat of water in joules per kilogram per degree Celsius. All right, here we go. Better put that down, 4,190. 4,190 multiplied by 0 0.5 kilograms multiplied by negative 55, negative optional, but it just indicates that you're cooling. And that's going to give me a big number, negative 115,225 joules. Remembering those joules are always produce ridiculous numbers. Calculating the heat needed to raise or lower the temperature of various materials is handy. But it's also handy to know about what happens when you mix two different substances at two different temperatures two different masses. We call that reaching thermal equilibrium because when you put these two substances together, one of them is going to lose some heat and one of them is going to gain some heat and they're going to come to thermal equilibrium at the same temperature. Now that thermal equilibrium temperature is going to have to be somewhere in between the low temperature of one substance and the high temperature of the other. Like if you do this calculation and you get a value higher or lower, then your two inputs, something went wrong. So here it is. This is the formula we're going to base it on. The heat lost by one substance has to equal the heat gained by the other substance. Now, of course, this is assuming there's no heat loss to the surroundings, which is a pretty big assumption, but we don't want to make it more complicated than it already is. The formula looks terrible, so let's just write something on top. This is a Q that gets lost. And this is the heat that gets gained. Because when you look at the variables on uh, either side there in the in the circles, ooh, gained. Uh, you see it, it is CM delta T, right? It's just got these crazy subscripts. So this little L here is for lost, not liquid. This little G is for gained. 
not gas, and the F is for final temperature. This is going to involve algebra, but there's a nice way to set it up that I'd like to show you. Using a table is going to make this way in more easy for you. So first, I just always set up a table that looks like this. I list my uh, three variables. I have the final temperature here, so this is either going to be the lost or the gain side temperature. I'll just put LG there, but you know, it'll be the initial temperature. So you could also call it TI, but it gets confusing. All right. So first thing I do is I decide what's hot and what's cold. If iron's at 350 and water's at 65, the hot side is iron. And I always even write it down because sometimes you're mixing water with water and everything, everything gets confusing. Okay. So let's look here. We've got to get our specific heat values for both iron and water. Well, I happen to know that water is 1.00 and I'm pretty sure iron is 0 0.115 and I'm making sure I'm getting them from the right location on the table. Next I move on to the mass. I have 0 0.5 pounds of iron and I have 10, hard to see, uh, yes, I assume that container is not 10 pounds. I assume the water is 10 pounds. <laughs> Badly worded. My bad. All right. And what temperature did the iron start at? 350. And what temperature did the water start at? 65. And what am I solving for? The final temperature. Usually this is what these questions are looking for. So instead of using TF, I'm actually just going to put X because I find that easier. If we're going to algebra, let's just bring in the X's right away. Okay, first things first. It's going to take a lot of room. I've got to write down the formula. So I have my hot side and my cold side. And so all the information here is going to transfer to the left side of the equation. So we know it's Cm temperature lost. It takes me a minute to even remember the formula. It's so crazy. temperature gained. And I'm not bothering with the ones on the bottom because I'm, I'm separating it out into hot and cold. All right, so all the information from iron goes on the left side. So the specific heat of iron, 0 0.115. The mass, 0 0.5. The starting temperature, TL in this case, 350 minus X. And I'm going to just pause and move this over because I'm already running out of room. Now I head back and do the same thing for the cold side. So the cool side, the cold side, the specific heat of water is 1. The mass of water that we have is 10. Can make it more reasonably sized. And the final temperature we don't know. It's x. So notice the difference where the x is on either side. Super important or things will not go correctly. Minus 65. All right, so before we algebra, let's make it so we only have one number in front. So I'm going to take 0.115 and multiply it by 0.5, and that's going to give me 0 0.0575. And I'll just leave this so we can talk about distribution. And on the other side, I'm going to go 1 times 10, so that just makes 10x minus 65. Okay, if you have something, a number in front of brackets, it means there's multiplication, but if there's two things in the brackets, the number in front has to multiply by both of them. So we have to go back do the magic rainbow where we take 0 0.0575 and multiply it both by 350 and by x. And we're going to do the same thing on the right side, so take 10 and multiply it by x and by negative 65. All right, so the multiplication 0 0.0575 times 350 is 20.125. And 0 0.0575 times negative x, you can't really do much there. You're just going to write them both down, keep that negative, smash them together. On the right side, 10 times x is just 10x. And then 10 times negative 65 is negative 650. If you're struggling with the algebra, I suggest you ask me for some uh, resources for algebra review for sure. Okay, next step is we're going to gather our x's on one side and our numbers on the other. And that can be left side, right side, doesn't really matter. I usually move things up in a way that makes it easy. For
for me. So what I think I want to do is move this number over to the right side to get both the 10x and the 0.0575x on the right side because that means I'm adding and I'm lazy. So recalling that if you move something across an equation, you can either do it quickly and just be like, well, if it's negative on the left side, it's going to be positive on the right side. If you're feeling a little shaky, you just make it disappear from the left side by adding the opposite, right? If it's negative, add the opposite in. If it had been positive, it would have subtracted. And then if you do it on the left side, the rule in algebra is you must do the same action on the right side. And you might have seen this built off to the side. I'm a fan of doing it up and down. Okay, so when I do that, my equation becomes 20.125. These two are gone equals, and now I have to add 10 to 0 0.0575. And the x doesn't change, it doesn't become x squared. Remember, you're just gathering like terms, minus 650. Same thing. I need to make that negative 650 come over to the left side. So I can know instinctively that I'm going to add it to both sides, or if you want the step for this example, you get the step. Woo, it's going to be tight. All right, and we're going to have 670.125 when I add these two numbers together, and on the right side, everything has disappeared. Last step in algebra, isolate x by dividing both sides of the equation with what, by whatever is stuck to the x. So here I'm going to divide both sides by 10.0575 to get it off the x. On the right side, that's just going to cancel because same thing, same thing equals 1. We do the division on the left side and we're going to end up with uh, running out of room, x equals 66.6 .6 degrees Fahrenheit. So first check is our final temperature in between our two input temperatures? Yes. Now, observation. Look at the massive difference between initial temperatures and where the final temperature ended up, right? Like that iron cooled an intense amount. The water rose 1.6 degrees in temperature. That's because water, well, for two reasons, it's a small amount of iron in a relatively large amount of water, but seriously, you know, it's only 20 times more. But water is an amazing, it's, I think maybe ammonia or something is a better heat sink, but water is the best heat sink. That specific heat of one is higher than pretty much any other substance. So if you want to quench your sword, always put it in water. Because that's so crazy, I want to do another example. Um, so we're going to go again. I'm going to write hot, cold. In this case, we moved over to the metric system. I see that my masses are 50 grams and 750 grams. Um, that's fine. You can leave that as long as they're the same. We're not actually solving for a heat amount, which knowing those two numbers would have come out in calories if I left them as grams. But we're good because we're just kind of solving for a temperature and avoiding actually getting the heat transfer. <laughs> okay, that was a terrible explanation. So let's figure out what's hot. Ah, this time the water is hot and the iron is cold. So we're going to put the cold temperature here, 20 degrees Celsius. The mass of the cold thing was 50 grams. It's iron because we're not gonna use that joules formula. We're gonna keep it as 0.5. 115, the hot side is water, the specific heat is 1, the mass is 750 grams, and the temperature initially is 80 degrees Celsius. We don't know the final temperature. I'm going to assume the final temperature is going to be close to 80, but not over, based on the last example that we did. Okay, here we go. So let's set it up again. The hot side is C, M, the initial temperature minus the final temperature. And the cold side is C, M, the final temperature minus the initial temperature. I put the things in the right place. So the water, C times 750 times 80 minus X 
equals C for iron times the mass of the iron times the final temperature, which we don't know, minus the initial temperature of the iron. Okay, once again, we're going to clean up in front first, multiplying 750 by 1, that's a bonus. Getting ready for that distribution. And on the other side, we just have 5.75, using kind of the same numbers every time, because I'm lazy, onto x minus 20. Next step, I'll still do this part at least, is distribution, because it's the part that confuses people. All right, 750 times 80 is 60,000. And then 750 times minus x is minus 750x. 5.75 times x is just 5.75x. And 5.75 times negative 20 is negative 115. All right, so I'm going to do it in one step. I'll give you a little label this time. I'm going to move the x to this side so it's positive, And I'm going to move the 115 to this side, to the left side, so it also becomes positive. So I'm going to have 60,000 plus 115, and you can do it the long way if you're more comfortable, equals 750x plus 5.75x. So 60,115, when I do the final math on the left side, is going to equal 755.75x. Last step, divide both sides by whatever is tying up the x to get it all by itself. And I'm going to get 79.5 degrees Celsius. So barely any temperature drop. Because water is awesome. In our class examples, we'll do a, at least one where we mix water with water because you get a little more dramatic temperature change when uh, <laughs> you do that. Or, you know, we could also mix a very large amount of a metal at a very high temperature in a very small amount of uh, water a couple of degrees above uh, a zero and see what happens. But yeah, you often see these small changes in temperature.